Good evening, residents of Del Toro. Good evening. Hello. One, two. Good evening, residents of Del Toro. Good, Good evening. evening. Good evening. Good evening. There we go. It's actually pretty cool. So thank you for coming to my District 3 Town Hall meeting. I'm very grateful for every single one of you that are here. Um, just some house rules. I don't know if you guys know what this is. Being fun, of course. It's a cell phone. If you can please put it on vibrate, I would really appreciate it. So it doesn't interrupt the meeting. Um, these meetings are for me to listen to you. So I'm not going to do very much talking. Obviously, I'm here to listen to concerns. I'm here to listen to your questions. And I'm here to listen to su su some suggestions, right? The goal of the plan is, is once these meetings are done, I will go back. I will take down all the questions, yes, from every single town hall. The ones that are similar, they're going to get merged together, but the plan is to try to get you a solid response or an answer to some of your questions, okay? Um, I want to thank Commissioner Burbank. As of now, he's come to every single one of them, so thank you. Uh, I'm your groupie, that. big guy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you to uh, Commissioner Avila Vasquez for being here in her, in her district. So uh, they'll be here at the end. I'll give them a, t some, a chance to speak if they'd like that. I, I've always given that opportunity. Uh, we are in the sunshine because there was plenty of notice I was given. So, very simple rules. I just start picking like that. I'll go and uh, I'll start calling each person and questions again, concerns, suggestions. If I don't give you an answer right now, remember I'm not here to talk away. I'm here to listen. So then I could come back with an answer. Okay. Good. That's what we'll I'm gonna pick on you first. Me? Yes. I'm good. You're good. Okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. You can just speak a little loud, that's all. Oh, well, there's no problem with that. <laughs> 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 I guess we're going to have a Nintendo sound. <laughs> that was your introduction. <laughs> <laughs> and your name, please, also, right? The name for the, for the record. Yes. It's Carol McPherson. Um, how can we develop a, more of a sense of community in a, our district? Um, especially, you know, speaking for myself, I live alone. And people in my neighborhood, they don't even really, they keep to themselves. Uh, and of course that helps, I think that, that things develop like um, people with drugs and, and, and people wandering around, squatting, all kinds of different issues can develop when people are not more cohesive. And um, I've tried speaking to my neighbors and going around, and I mean, you know, we went around mm -hmm. when the um, election was going on. And uh, people are just so insular. and. I've discussed this with Tara as well. I want to uh, to know what we can do. I maybe even get more block watches developed. Um, I've had crime happen on my street where I'm the only person I even called in. Actually, that's a, I think that's honestly a great suggestion. That's one of the, the few things. So that's been one of the no, the top three questions that I've been getting from all the town halls. All, all the town halls. How can we build more community consensus? Right. Um, and it's a very difficult question. It's, there's not really a right answer. But um, I have been taking a couple courses. I've reached out to a couple elected officials, both in Seminole County, here in Volusia County, and even one or two in Orange County. And uh, one of the top remarks that I get back is community watch, uh, community watch places, right? <coughs> Where the, the, the specific neighborhood does a community watch neighborhood and they partner up with the sheriff's office or their local police department, and that's, that's one of the ways. Um, I think that's a good start, but there's, especially in our community, right, Dalton as a whole, there, there just needs to be more than just that. So I, I am looking for other ways. I don't have an answer to for you. Um, even after I look at all the videos, I'm still trying to figure out an answer. I think town halls help, honestly. They, they, they definitely yes. help. Yes. Um, going to City Hall sometimes is very intimidating. You know, you have everyone looking at you. I know there's a camera here, but it's more of a, per a personal set. So this is less intimidating. So. But I will try my best to get you an answer to that. And I'm willing to be involved. Whatever well, you, you know what? Yes. That's one of the key things. As long as you start being involved, you're a new face. I, have, I honestly have not seen you in the other ones. There's a couple people I haven't seen in other ones. And it's very exciting to see more people getting involved. So thank you. Thank you, Tara D'Erica. Um, my question is, is more broad, so I think as we all know, there's a lot of, of infrastructure improvements that need to happen in Deltona. Stormwater issues, 
how how do we go about implementing all that and doing all that work that needs to be done, but yet being mindful of where the money's coming from and potentially raising taxes for the residents. You know, what, what other opportunities are there out there to fund a lot of that infrastructure work that is needed for our city? Right now, Governor DeSantis uh, started a special session on Monday. And one of the specific things in that special session is infrastructure, specifically stormwater. I think they've allocated like $200 million, okay. um, which if you think about it, 67 counties, there's a bunch of cities within each county. It's not a lot of money. Um, <clears throat> but that's one route, right? Obviously, a lot of us ran on different platforms for different things, but I, I, I'm speaking for myself right now, but I'm pretty sure that everyone up there right now has infrastructure in their mind because I don't think any of us want to see our, our, our residents in, with an inability to get into their home. So um, I will tell you that I did speak to our city manager, our interim city manager. We are working on a, on a plan so we can present our state rep and our state senator. Uh, once that's done, then we're gonna try to get as much money as we can. So until he shares a plan, I can't get into the details because he's pretty much where we're a weak mayor, former government, or a city manager, former government, so he's kind of like the unofficial boss. Thank Valerie. you. Hi, uh, Valerie Vadney. Um, That's good. That's good. Okay. Um, do we have any grant writers with the city that um, work specifically and look at grants to get some monies? And do we have a salesperson for existing empty storefronts? Somebody who's out there soliciting, trying to get businesses to come in to some of these open, you know, the, these vacant um, properties. Um, I know over here, um, Doyle and Cortland, I think it is, there was a Winn-Dixie, brand new Winn-Dixie there, and it wasn't there very long, but you're gonna drive a country mile to get to another market, you know. Um, but that was one of my questions. Um, our relationship with the county, not only with David Santiago as our, our District 5 uh, representative, but, um, like what happened with Mr. Peters not being asked to the table with the other four agencies being asked um, when Volusia County Sheriff says, you know, hey, no more, or Volusia County says no more uh, funding to Volusia County Sheriff's Office and you've got to come up with $3 million, 2023-2024 budget. Um, who's at the table and where is, the, where is our relationship with the county? And it's, you know, not only with the Sheriff's Office, but all the way around um, so that we have that collaborative effort and not that city versus you know county mentality and then um just over here in lakeside um the condos the um infrastructure and that cluster i'm just going to say that um and you know knowing that this is the only lakefront property that's here in all of the city of deltona there is the opportunity to make that a revenue generating property where uh, you could have a marina down there where you've got the boat dock, go over to Sanford on a boat, um, you know, a, a little restaurant there. I mean, there's just so much that that vision, and I know you have a vision for a downtown um, Deltona, and I, I love that idea, but what about that? Um, and where are we with the engineering company and all of that? So, I'm I'll, sorry. I will, I will try to, so obviously some I will have to get back to you on the <clears throat> on Lakeshore, I will tell you that our, our interim city manager did give us a, somewhat of an update. Um, I can tell you that I know our commissioner, uh, Vila Vasquez, is always asking for updates because obviously this is her district and she cares about it. I have continuously asked also our interim city manager for some type of update. They're working on it, right? Not to throw anyone under the bus, but the former city manager, um, could have done a little bit of a better job of making sure that what happened there didn't happen. He's a, he was legitimately an, an engineer. Mm -hmm. uh, that's water under the bridge. Let's focus on, on, on getting this fixed, uh -huh. right? The last thing we want to do, and I, I hate to say stuff like this, but the last <coughs> thing we want to do is we have three artesian wells that have been punctured, is rush into trying to fix something and then leave it worse off than what we started, mm -hmm. okay? I used to drive by that place. I used to sit on the little bench. I used to be there with my wife. You know, I miss that. We don't have it. 
I think the last time I came, I came with another resident and I looked and I, I, I was trying, honestly, I've been trying to avoid it. Because it, it is somewhat of a landmark for us, you know, the Little Red School. It, it, it's very disheartening what, what we're seeing. So more than anything, I think we, we have to also think about accountability, right? And, and I mentioned this at a Monday's meeting. When a, when, a, when a contractor messes up, right? Nobody's perfect, there's gonna be some mess ups. But when you do it not twice, but maybe three times, there, there's a problem. And then when you come to the commission and you ask for more money to fix the problem you created, it further intensifies the situation and it makes it very toxic. So I think we, we need to, as, as a city, think about putting things in place so when somebody does mess up, and, and they maybe do it continuously, maybe there should be some type of moratorium where, hey, maybe for the next four or five years we should not do business with you. Why? Because then the next contractor coming in knows that, hey, let's you know, check our T's and dot our I's and make sure let's do everything the right way. Um, so I know we're working on that. I also don't want that to be rushed, okay? Right. Um, the first question you ask, you're gonna have to go down that list for okay. me. Okay, grant time. writers, if we have any grant writers. As of right now, mm -hmm. last time I checked, and, and don't hold me to it, I'll double check, and I would I have your information so I can get back to you maybe tomorrow or the day after. We do not have a grant writer in the city. That was the last time I checked. Second question. Uh, uh, salesperson, anybody out there soliciting for business? Jerry Mays is our person that goes and tries to kind of get business to, to Delta. And how's that going? I, We'll have to, <laughs> I haven't had a chance to sit down with Jerry, to be fair. So I don't know what's, what's been, uh, I don't know what that is, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I, I don't know what some of the projects are, mm -hmm. okay? I'd rather give you an honest answer than try to circle around. Well, I just saw uh, a post that McDonald's is gonna be the old, uh, coming into the old Bank of America on Normandy and Providence. Mm -hmm. Haven't heard that. Just what we need, yeah, McDonald's. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, but I mean, I, there's just so many existing um, empty some, vacant. Some of those, Valerie, could be from things that, that, in the ha that, that have, for example, I know there's a Taco Bell that's been in process <laughs> and before I got in there, right, and uh -huh. before some of us got in there. Uh -huh. So, hence, none of us can take credit for it. Um, that's going on Saxon, right, uh -huh. right in front of Harmony Clinic, we're close to it. Uh -huh. So there, there are some things that have already been in the works. Okay. What was your other question? And uh, the relationship that we have with the county versus the okay. city. Monday morning, I was at the round table for elected officials for Lucia County. Had a great conversation. I already have a relationship with Chairman Brown. We have a very good, positive relationship. Mm -hmm. We can be very honest to each other, mm -hmm. right, without knowing that we, we're not going to hurt each other's feelings. He'll tell me when he doesn't like something. I'll tell him when I don't like what I'm seeing. For example, like I'm very upset that they have not appointed David because there's one month before the next meeting. I explained that it has nothing to do with whether it's a meeting, it's a month away or not. We need to be able to speak to our, our elected officials now mm -hmm. so we can work some things. Some of the ideas that Mr. Chisholm has is to get some of the water away from a residence is to Deep Creek. And that's that's a county that's a county pro that's county property. Mm -hmm. uh, Danny Robbins stepped in. He's he's a county councilman for a different district. He said, "Whatever you guys need, between now and then, I would be more than happy to represent you." Um, I told him, "I'm very grateful for that, and I love the relationship and everything. But we we can also take away somebody else's representative to kind of come in for us." Right. So, but it's it's good going forward. It's good. It looks good. And David has come to plenty of these, <coughs> and he's sat in and he's listened. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. Oh, sir? Um, I have a couple of things just to comment on. Uh, one is something I do in my neighbor. You were talking about uh, community relations and all. And when anybody moves into a house adjacent to mine, it's been my habit to go over there, introduce myself. If I'm so enthused, make a loaf of banana bread. Um, I stopped doing that during the corona. Um, but I need to start doing it again. But that was always nice because I bring it to him right mm -hmm. out of the oven. It's at 250 mix, you get it in Publix. And, oh, I'd uh, love you being my yeah. dad. <laughs> yeah. But it's nice. And, and I haven't had any problem with uh, my neighbors. They've always been good. I got a rental next door, and he was backing out of the driveway in the middle of the night. And 
took down my mailbox, and by the time he left me a note, and by the time he got done, he had it fixed better than it was. Uh, actually, I took it down about a year ago. <laughs> so he did a better job than I did fixing it. But, but yeah, that seems to work well, and it's personal. And of course, that can expand from there. And I see people in these neighborhood disputes fighting all the time and on Facebook about this neighbor and that neighbor, and, and I make the suggestion they take the local banana bread over there. People laugh at me. <laughs> I, I see your wife over there. Yeah, yeah. right now. <laughs> but it seems to work. It seems too. to work, and I, and, uh, um, I, I get good results with it personally. But that's a good way to start you know, bringing it home. Um, the other is uh, I, I see uh, water. I don't, I'm not an engineer, but all this water, I don't understand why we couldn't pump some of it out to the intercoastal waterway instead of the St. John's River. Uh, if we work towards a grand solution like that, we could dump a lot of water out that way that wouldn't cause the river to flood up. So I hope whoever's going to come up with a solution for that includes pumping in all directions uh, to get the water out the next time this happens, and there'll be a next time. But um, the other is um, waste. I, I, I ran a business most of my life. And uh, I liked the idea that I was in charge. I didn't have a committee to go to. But me and my partner did everything, made all the decisions, and uh, we did what we wanted um, within the bounds of the law and so on, the government. But um, it seems to me that it just should not take as much money as we spend on figuring out what to do with the food truck or other projects we sit in, tens of thousands sometimes hundreds of thousands, uh, just doing the background. I know that's a thing nowadays, but we need to find a way to scale back to zero and start over again. So, you know, do we really need this, this study, or do we really need to pay this person that much for that? Why don't we get an attorney who had a C average in law school instead of an A average? We don't need the A average guy. We're in Deltona, we're not the city of Orlando. And I'd like to see more control on the waste, and that would allow for more money in, you know, for other stuff. So, again, I'm not in, in your shoes to see all those dots and, and details, but uh, uh, that would be an area I think we could make some progress in. I, the only thing I can say about it is, number one, I'm not an engineer, so I'm not going to even no, try yeah. to explain any of that, because I, I honestly don't know, right? Uh, my line of field was very different than, than, than the water situation. I do know that we have some very, very capable people that are working on it. I hate telling my residents that it's gonna take a little bit of time, right? Because it, it's our human nature that we want everything done quickly, and I get it. Especially when I, I've sat across, sometimes, believe it or not, I have six, seven different meetings on a daily basis, right? And yeah. granted, I know this is part-time, but I, I think our residents they, they, they earned this, they have spent too long from, and I'm not putting fingers at anyone, but they just, they need to hear their elected officials. Um, and I've sat across multiple families that didn't spend Thanksgiving in their home, are probably not gonna spend Christmas in their home, because I, I, they either have to canoe or kayak to get to them. <coughs> I know we have two city employees, I can't say who they are, but that are in the same situation. So, so a lot of us understand. Um, and we feel the pain. Um, as far as the A grade versus C grade attorney, we don't, look, we want the A grade attorney. Because we're adult home, right? We don't want to be Orlando, don't get me wrong, but we should not deny ourselves the very best because in the past we've made mistakes of doing all these studies and I think where we have failed is we do a lot of studies and then we don't follow up mm -hmm. on these studies. Maybe that's that's it. It. That is literally the, because some of these studies are, are very necessary, right? You know, like, do we need to have a housing moratorium in place? That's what those studies are, 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 are for. Um, but let's let's act. Let's just not be good. Um, and I'll try to get you an answer to some of that. Okay. okay. So some of my questions were already asked. So what I'll add to, my list is at least for um, Twin Lakes. So I'm a resident of Twin Lakes. And, um, so you know that guy. Yes, very much. <laughs> and we appreciate him so. But um, I know we have to fix our roads and recently started to learn all the 
politics around public, public roads and private roads and all the taxes and how all that works. Um, so I know that in one of the city meetings prior to you becoming mayor, we had um, asked for our tax breakdown to be looked at um, and what can be done to help the residents of the Twin Lakes area save some money in Texas that are going everywhere else but in our little area to at least for a short period or whatever period we can get to use some of that money towards uh, rebuilding our roads and the infrastructure fixes that we need to make. So, so I believe she's talking about the stormwater ad valorem tax. Yes. I will tell you I am one of seven people, right, as it was notably uh, said to me Monday. Um, I am only one vote, okay? Do I want to help all of our residents? Absolutely. But we also have to look, there, there are other HOAs in the area, I believe. I don't know how many other private, I think we have a private, one more private HOA, don't we? I, I think the classification between private and public or HOA. Or offense, offense. I think yeah, offense. most of the stormwater is private if it's an HOA. I think that there's a difference between, like Saxon Ridge, for instance, it's also in this district, they have public roads. Uh, so the city paves those roads. but. I don't think the, I think the gate has very little to do with that, and it has to do with how the community was originally platted exactly. with the developer. With the developer, right. um, I don't think anyone on our dais is not unwilling to help. Right? And again, I'm speaking for myself, but we have two other commissioners here. I just can't foresee them saying, you know, I, I don't want to help. Obviously, you know, there's set rules. The, the, the developer did some contracts. That's something that the city, the, the interim city manager is going to have to look at. Um, I know Adam came up with a couple of, of solutions. I believe he had a meeting or something with the interim city manager. And, and I believe one of the things he discussed is renting the machine the city owns. And that, that would save Twin Lakes a lot of money. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think we're going to be able to do that um, after talking to Mr. Chisholm. What, what we can do, what we're going to do to try and address that, um, our private infrastructure, absolutely. Uh, we will look at a special taxing district or special assessment. I think most of us are leaning towards a taxing district. Um, we have to fix the stuff within our property's limits. But some of our issues are volume related, and I spoke to Mr. Chisholm about this. Um, and there's areas behind um, Yes. One of our residents' house you've been to um, that needs a retention pond. The county the, property. That's a, in a county. Yeah. Again, the importance the of the relationship with the county. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, so look, there, there's things, and I know Adam, I, he's been working on that. Um, I would say follow up with Mr. Vasquez and your, and your current city commissioner. I know she's always been willing to, to listen to her residents, right? Um, and, and try to, to see what you guys can all work together. I think whatever's gone on in the past needs to stop. We, we're all in it together. We don't want to be in a sinking ship and nobody helping each other. So let's just try to work together and move forward for, for the future of the city. So, Mr. Pesha? Okay. Yeah, we're going to go like that and we'll end up right. oh, One of my questions was addressed already by one of the young ladies up there at the table. Lakeshore Boulevard, waterfront. Uh, the boat ramp, hate to see it jump down on my boulder. <laughs> uh, with that straw project going on down there, they drilled two holes, hit two spring heads. That whole project area is located between two springs, Green Springs, Gemini Springs. It's nothing but a problem waiting to happen again. I'd like to see the whole project shut down totally. We really don't need it. It's only there to uh, help bolster additional expansion of the city, not to take care of our current residents. So with me, i like to see that turn into, like you said, a recreational area. It's got the old uh, community center there, the old uh, schoolhouse there. It's a trailhead center. It's on a scenic road. I hate to see that developed and all that beautiful Florida landscaping turned into housing developments. I think mean, that's a lot of it going on down there, and it's the only piece of land that Deltona has access to on Lake Monroe. It's a short stretch, but it's a beautiful stretch. If I can give you a suggestion, if you would write an email to all the commissioners and the interim city manager <laughs> with all your reasoning, right? And if they can bring it up, maybe to put it on a workshop or something. <clears throat> But to bring it up, you're, you're a resident. You, you, you guys are the ones that have elected us. 
and uh, you need to hear your voice, right? These is, this is great because I'll put it on my list of questions, but if you do it more directly, then sometimes it has a more powerful impact. So if you can put it in an email, send it to all of us. Listen, Monday I respond to 63 emails. I respond to almost every single one of the emails, unless the one of the city officials already took it over and said we're taking care of it, then I don't respond. But just send an email and um, it'll be a more direct problem with a response or, or you'll at least try to get some type of acknowledgement. You will for me, so. And also if you don't get a response, right? Like we all live in this district, so when you see it come up on the agenda that they're gonna do some more stuff with Lakeshore Drive, right? Let's, everyone who came here tonight, we, we want the, the boat ramp reopen, we want to go watch the sunsets. Um, let's show up down there and you know, tell them how we feel about it because he is only one boat um, up there and, and really, you know, the whole, the straw project is true, is to put water back in the aquifer so that we can pull more water out of the aquifer, is to recharge the aquifer. So if you don't want it there, I mean, they do have to respond to you. Um, when you go down there, especially when you go with more, more of us, right, they tend to listen a little bit better. I will tell you this. Uh, City of Sanford reached out to me. Um, we were at a, another round table of elected officials in Orlando. There was people there from all over the state, from all 67 counties. I was the only person representing anyone in Volusia that was representing the city of Deltona. There was nobody else from Volusia County there, unfortunately. There was Orlando, Orange County, Miami-Dade, Miami-Dade County, Port Gables, Sanford. There was a lot of people there, so he got my contact from there. I sent the email he sent me to Mr. Chisholm, and I asked him if he can also forward it to all the commissioners. The city of Sanford would love to work with Deltona so we can become a sister city again. Um, and I made a suggestion, again, I'm one person, that maybe we could partner up with some type of taxi you know, boat tax or something to go from Sanford to Delta. So, you know, but we can't access it right now because it's unavailable, you know? Bringing up Sanford, they read, redid their waterfront. If you haven't been down there to take a look at the work they did, take a few minutes and drive down along that. It's beautiful. They even put all the roadside roads where you can pull off and park, picnic benches along the way, fishing spots, for their families and kids to do to say so. It would be great to see that on this side of the lake. They also have a downtown area there too, and from that waterfront, I noticed when I was there last week, you can get like a trolley around downtown Sanford. Uh, we used to go to Orlando for that, but if there was a water taxi, like we could just go to Lakeshore Drive, take the boat across and have a night out in the town. And I think there was a um, private company over there that was interested in you know, developing on our side of the lake and, and kind of helping invest to make that happen. So I'm not really sure how old it is. Someone here has. Yeah. I've been driving around lately. It, it seems like a small thing after I hear some of our monumental problems that we've got and everything. But since we've had the two hurricanes, Deltona's looking a little shabby, let me tell you. Uh, there's a lot of road signs that are, are names of roads that are leaning. There are some that are even missing, I, I, I noticed the other day. We need to get out there and clean up Deltona a little bit. It's, it's looking a little, a little unkept and unloved. I, I will tell you that our Public Works Department has fixed, I'm probably going to get this wrong, over 320 signs, which doesn't seem like a lot, but whenever you see one of those missing, before I leave, I'll give everyone a business card. Send me an email with the location, and I'll send it to Mr. Chisholm. He'll send somebody out. Usually that same day it gets rectified. Um, the trash thing, you know, the debris, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. We, we've really dropped the ball, and I say we because I'm the mayor now, so whatever happens under my watch, I take full responsibility. We've really dropped the ball on that whole, on that whole situation. Um, you know, whether we pick up debris or the, the construction stuff, we really do need to do a better job in at least communicating that to our to our employees. So I, I don't disagree with you. We, we do need to give it a little more tender love. <coughs> and there's even houses out there that are looking pretty terrible that have been vacant for a long time. And, you know, they, they come and they, they, they get on to me because my trailer hitch was two inches in front of my house. But I've got a house, you know, down the road that the shed's all tore up in a big ball and stuff is falling off the windows and it looks awful, you know, and uh, I don't understand. 
you know, why that is so, why that's not important and like two inches of trailer it is more important. So. Um, I was, my name is Jason Flint. I live in Lake Lisa, one of the new communities. And I was kind of wondering, what is the oversight that the city of Deltona has to ensure that the new builders are living up to their promises to the residents and the city? Because, I mean, we have like some a list of things that will probably come your way eventually. Um, it's not for this forum, but what is the current oversight that we have as a government over these private builders? Like, is the Planning and Zoning Commission doing their part to follow up on what's being promised, or how's that all play out on your level? That, the answer to that, I don't know. Um, okay. Send me the email with those specific questions, and I will, I will forward them so I can try to get you an answer. So I, I, I don't want to lie to you and give you an answer that's untruthful. Okay. okay? But if you, say, if you send me an email, I'll, I'll, I'll try to get you an answer. All right, thank you. And be specific to the things that you're having. Oh, no, I will. I'll be very specific. So, and, and I'll give you a good example. And I'm going to tell you from my perspective. I can't speak for the other commissioners. Uh, when Phase 3 of Fernando Project came up, I had literally walked that whole community three and a half times. Right? Probably one of the most hottest areas in all of Deltona, but it's also one of the areas that has probably the least trees. Part of the problem that a lot of them kept telling me is, well, they promised all this stuff to us, and none of it's happening. It's, it's happening. Uh, we're supposed to take over the HOA. I mean, there was a whole list of things. When, when, when the time came, I was looking to verify because, you know, sometimes an opinion doesn't make it a fact, right? When I was looking, when I asked the questions, hey, why have you guys not turned over the HOA when you guys are at or above the 90% capacity? Well, because phase three is about happening. No, it's not. You, you can't do that. That's kind of not being, you know, so it's important that you speak up. Okay. Otherwise, I mean, unfortunately, most of the time, I'm not saying that's the case. We just assume things are being done the, the right way. No questions? Okay. Yeah. Well, first off, I appreciate you jumping immediately in and uh, being interested in speaking directly to the residents. Um, Thank you. That's pretty awesome. And um, I'm mostly just here because I'm interested learning and familiarizing myself with the engine workings of the city. I've been here most of my life. I've been here when I was five years old. And I've seen a lot of things come and go, a lot of people come and go. And it just, it, there are a lot of things that are very concerning and beginning to get more concerning. Um, some of the things that I am concerned about uh, have already been mentioned and articulated very well. Um, Infrastructure, community, things like that. Um, I mean, I remember watching a playground that I used to play on as a child get sold off and ripped out to the CBS. And it seems that in our rapid and somewhat reckless expansion for the sake of revenue, we're losing something very important. I, I will tell you that you're you're being heard, right? I think you're being heard. Um, I think there's a lot of, uh, at least when, when it comes to residential stuff, it needs to get slowed down a little bit. Um, I'm looking at this from a different perspective. I'm looking at, I'm, I'm not looking at it from a development perspective, because I get that question asked a lot. Well, you want to build a downtown, you want to take down all of our trees, you want to get rid of the only reserve. I'm like, no, you can't even do that even if you want it. I'm looking at redevelopment, right? I'll give you a good example. You have the Winn Dixie Plaza that's over there by Portland and Doyle. It's been sitting empty for like 20 years, right? Why well, instead of bulldozing half of the trees wherever, let's redevelop that. You have uh, Daltona Boulevard. At one point, that was the downtown of Daltona, from what I understood. There's CRA funds that are even involved there. Let's spruce that place up, look at make it look more modern. Let's redevelop that. You see, you can do all that without messing with any of these other locations that we have. One of the things that makes Deltona where we are, and I believe Mr. French has come up and spoken about it many times, I know Mr. Pesha has as well, it's we're, we're what is it, a monarch butterfly city, we're a tree city. Um, a lot of people know us for our trails. From my understanding, we get uh, foreigners from Australia, from all over, the, all over the world to go look at our scrub jigs. 
Why? Because those little birds, they just are fascinated with landing on our heads or landing in our hands, whatever it is. You know, those are things that attract people to Deltona. That's what makes Deltona the city we are, right? So I think more and more, you're, the residents are going to be heard. We just need to build that sense of community more and more. So. You're good. Mr. Shimpas? Good, thanks. You're good. Rachel? All right. We got a couple of things to say. Number one, this is no less intimidating than a city council meeting with your two guards on either side. <laughs> Sorry, no less intimidating. Okay. Um, the thing about the taxis, I heard about that at least two years ago. So just to put credit where credit is due, I did hear about it. It would be a hard sell for Lakeshore Drive because of the amount of traffic. And by the way, my name is Rachel. I've been a District 3 resident for 18 years. Florida resident for 30, formerly from New York. It doesn't matter, but anyway. The, the Lakeshore Drive traffic is not able to handle what you're talking about with taxis and stuff. There's no place to park across the street. We went through this when the community center was closed down, but they couldn't pave it. They had issues with stuff. It's a whole lot more um, involved. Those condos have been there for 40 years. They have to take into consideration what those 700 residents of those condos feel. And I don't see anything except for the community center going back in there as was talked about at the last meeting that we had with the city um, interim city manager. They took away the old folks being able to eat lunch there, which was a big deal. And they took away our ability to have meetings there, which was a stipulation of agreement we had because Edgewater donated a bunch of land to be able to build Thornby Park. So that's neither here nor there. So anyway, those are my two points about that. The other thing that I would like to talk about, I'm glad people bring up the straw project because it is the biggest, in my opinion, debacle of District 3. It's one of the most beautiful places we had and it uh, was ripped from us in the blink of an eye. So yes, I understand they're working on it, made a mistake. Okay, the other <laughs> issue I have, Deltona Water, because nobody's talked about this too much. So. Uh, Deltona Water had uh, told us that we were going to go to a system where you could do paperless billing. Okay, at uh, the condo complex where I am, as water, we have 31 <coughs> water bills that we pay monthly. I brought a little example for you. Every month we get this from Deltona Water. And we have to sort through and pay every one of these bills separately. As you know, banks now charge per transaction, so our association is paying more money for banking fees. But my person in the front office has to go through every single one and log them and make sure that they match up. This is <laughs> 45 cents per postage, 31 just to me, plus the inserts in every single one. Seems like a little bit of common sense that paperless billing should be relatively <clears throat> important task to get to. And that's all I got right now. Thank you. Um, I've spoken to our interim city manager about modernizing our systems. Right? Um, that's obviously something that has to go before, before the commission. Um, I will take the information you just said and I will make sure that I repeat it to him. Because obviously that's an issue. We don't want our residents to pay more than we're supposed to. So I know, I know that's a problem. Um, as far as the water taxi stuff, Look, that was this. Uh, it was an email that I got. It's public record. If somebody says, "Hey, can I get any emails you got from Stanford?" It's a suggestion they made. Um, I have to forward it because it was sent to me, and it's not a strong error from the government. So I have to make sure the interim city manager gets it, and he shares that opinion with everybody else that's there. Um, if it was shared with a prior person, again, I'm there now. I'm one of those people that the straw thing happened before my time. I don't, I, I'll take the blame. I don't care. I, I try not to look at the past. I'm looking at the future. Um, and the last thing is, if, so just so everybody knows, the only reason I have Nick and Adam helping me, I'm just one person, right? He helps me with, if there's anybody having questions on, on Facebook, and he usually helps me with pictures and stuff like that. So they're not really guards. No. no not so, at all. but if you feel that <laughs> way, I, 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 stop, 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 stop. 
I'm, if you feel that way legitimately, I apologize, but that's not the intention of what they're there for. Well, the, the only thing, if you started the meeting by saying, this is so-and-so who's going to help me with these questions that I don't know, and this is so-and-so sure. who's going to help me with this. It's just, Point you know, a, a, and Point a lot of things at the city commission, I don't go to the commission meetings anymore. I watch them on TV because they are very intimidating. People are out there. They scream, they yell. It's the same people every single week. I will not go. I will not speak my voice. And that's a sad thing for Deltona because it's not the way it should be. And this, to me, I'm sorry, no offense to either of you, but it's quite intimidating to have the three of you just staring out here when we're all sitting this way. Yeah, I didn't know. Was there a, re a release of, of being videotaped? I well, it's a public, it's a public meeting. Regardless, um, and what she said about people screaming and hollering, and I saw somebody at the last meeting saying, well, you upheld Rosenwald or whatever versus New Jersey for freedom of speech, but yet on the deltonaflorida.gov website about the Deltona meetings, people are supposed to be civil. So that's maybe in New Jersey and maybe freedom of speech um, for the Constitution, that's one thing, but when we have another rule inside this room or inside the city commission, there's decorum, and you, that's up to you to uphold that. Can I, as a resident of District 3, can I uh, the water taxi? No, that's not. Let's just leave it. Actually, that was a perfect segue, because that's exactly what I wanted to talk about. One of the things that I'm seeing devolve, government cannot function until government, the, until it does its first function of government. And the first function of government, per our Constitution, is to protect the rights of people. The First Amendment is one of, obviously, was the, our founders felt that it was very, very important. There are five elements to it, and they put it first. Right, there's federal government, state, local, and, all the way down. And if you read Article 6, Paragraph 2, you will see in there that it says, there it, in, it states in Article 6, Paragraph 2 of the Constitution, that no law or ordinance can be made that is not in pursuance thereof. The Guys, we're not, not in with our federal in our folks, city. We're not going to have it. No, no, no. Because it doesn't work that way. It's the, like speech the, is, the, is the word. The federal government. Guys, we're not going to have a debate here. I like this is my time. Okay, go ahead. But let's not have our our constitution, and we also have a state constitution that I see is not being followed. Um, we do have multiple Supreme Court cases where the Supreme Court has come to the, you know, they, it's they, their opinion based on the First Amendment and Rosenthal versus State of uh, New Jersey is one of those where you, as a governmental body, you cannot um, in any way, shape, or form, you can't tell the people how they can speak to you. You just simply cannot do it. It's against the law. It will get you sued. Um, if you look at Punta Gorda, they just got sued by the Heritage I don't know Foundation. That's a Deltona issue right now. Is that a Deltona issue? All right, guys. So, Punta Gorda just the Heritage Foundation just sued them because they tried to implement a very similar ordinance where they were going to tell people how you're allowed to speak, how you're allowed to express yourself. Well, now they've gotten themselves in really big trouble, and now Punta Gorda is going for round two on Second Amendment ordinances that violate Florida state law. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. But, um, we, you know, I don't want to see the Second Amendment being eroded when somebody comes up there and they're stating something that is factual about, it doesn't matter, and by the way, our Florida Constitution, this idea of we must address the mayor, that is not what the Florida Constitution tells us, and your rules cannot supersede that. The Florida Constitution tells us that we have the inherent right given by God to, inst to instruct our representatives. Not just you, it doesn't have to go through you. Those are rules that you guys chose with uh, Robert's Rules of Parliament, uh, Parliamentary Procedure. We are not, we don't, we don't have to adhere to those rules. So they don't bind to us. <clears throat> and the other thing is just the pettiness that's going on up there right now with them trying to undermine you. It's very clear, it's very obvious to anybody who's looking that, you know, when somebody's up there trying to state a fact about a commissioner, a point of order, point of order that's a, a personal attack. No, it's not. That is a fact being stated. A personal attack would be your mother's a geranium. You know, that's a personal attack. But to say you did this or that and it can be proven by the record, it is a, it's an actual factual statement that would hold up in court. All right, thank you. Mr. Sosa. 
I'm good for tonight. Mm -hmm. Sir? Not to minimize all of the issues, but my issue started four years ago. Um, and I know the underlying basis of it has been brought up a lot of times in the history of the city. When I researched the codes related to parking, to cars, and particularly boats, trailers, and motor, uh, recreational vehicles on, on city prop on private property, all the residents that showed up at the meeting when they were enacting these ordinances were against it. So it's problematic that the city went against the people that spoke out against it. And um, that's what started my involvement with the city against my will is when they trespassed on my private property so that I couldn't park my trailers that I had parked there for four years, that I, phys that I cannot park where the code requires due to my disabilities. And um, the, so that the, the, my main focus is on the city's violation of the federal laws, the Americans with Disabilities Act, the Rehabilitation Act, the Fair Housing Act. And the city attorney and one of the commissioners made statements that were factually false to the public to make themselves look good. Um, and, and it's deplorable that they're, they're doing this. HUD has already investigated them. Um, but the city's never been in compliance with those federal laws. They've taken $21 million since 2003 and made assurances to the federal government that they would use those funds non-discriminatorily, but they built City Hall. The parking lot's not in compliance with, with ADA regulations. The sidewalks are not in compliance with ADA regulations. None of the bus stops are in compliance with it. For four years, they, they, I mean, they, they were, 27 years ago, they should have been in compliance with everything they did. I brought it up four years ago, and nothing has been done until Peter's got somewhat involved. Uh, he started uh, redoing the sidewalks, and they're supposed to be redoing the bus stops, but nothing's been done. Uh, when I first asked the city for an accommodation based on my disabilities, and it's important that the public knows that the definition of disability under the federal laws are pretty broad, and uh, osteoporosis, hoarding, homelessness, cancer, pregnancy, <coughs> disease, vision uh, limitations, hearing limitations, those are all uh, disability that's defined in the, in the uh, ADA, even if you have a history of it. So if you've had cancer and you're no longer have cancer, you're still protecting have protections. And he brought it up at one of the meetings to uh, Ms. Uh, John O'Grady, I believe, um, that if a person looks like they have problems complying with a lawn maintenance code or some type of code, uh, would you bring it up to the resident that they have uh, what the city's obligations are and what their rights are under the ADA? And he flat out said no. But on the federal law, the city has an obligation to, A, not notice the city resident that, but they've never notified the public as to what the city's obligations are and what the resident's rights are. Uh, not only do you have a right, but if you associate with somebody else who has a disability, you're protected as well as them, even if you don't have a disability. Um, I, I, he, here, I don't mean to interrupt you. Uh, he, here's what, what I know, right? Um, I've asked I've asked our <coughs> city manager if we have a Title 288 code. Right, I heard his response. Apparently, Apparently, there are different types of Title II. Let me finish. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know about that. I'm not an attorney. I, I'm not studied on that. Right? I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you. I did. I did ask in our last meeting if we are missing a Title II ADA coordinator that we need to search for one right away. Mm -hmm. So I was told that we are searching for a code compliance um, ADA coordinator specifically because we do not have one in staff. So if that's where you're having an issue, I, from the moment I got your first emails, I, we, we've been working on getting one in there. Um, I'm sorry it hasn't been done sooner, right? Uh, but the moment I got wind of it, we started looking. I told Mr. Chisholm and he right away uh, started looking for Monday. I asked again if we if we had anything and they're, they're, they're already looking for it. I know the, the building, the, the looking at the buildings to see uh, what, uh, if they're ADA compliant or not. I know Mr. Sosa brought that up, former Commissioner Sosa brought that up at the last commission meeting. Uh, we're supposed to be getting some report uh, very, very soon. But those are things that are already in place. Again, I, I can't change time. There's nothing that I can do about whoever it was in the past that did not want to do something. At this point, I care about what's being done now. Okay, I want to move our city forward. I don't want to keep going to the past and oh my God, this didn't get done, that didn't get done. Let's together move forward, okay? These attacks that we do on each other as residents, that's what keeps holding us down. And I get it, things that, that, that should have changed, need to change, that's fine. But we shouldn't be getting into the pettiness of 
this person did that, that person did that. Let's move forward, let's fix what needs to be fixed, but let's move forward, we need to move forward. In response to that, what he said is not true. Just He said just because someone says we need it, it doesn't make it so. I'll, I'll talk to you about it sure. uh, yeah. separately, but. Sure. Okay, got several issues. The first off is water. And I'm talking about what we pay for water and sewer. It is way too damn high. We are the highest in the state, from what I've read. Even we're higher than Heathrow which is an upper class, a higher scale city, area. Higher than Lake Mary. My buddy who lives four doors down also has a house up in Grand Island, New York. What we pay for a month on the low end, on my low end, I'm just one person in my house, so my bill is low, okay? He, he can pay that for three months up there in New York which is a democratic area. You know, you would think that they would be paying the most. Um, he pays like $30 a month for water and sewer. And just our water bill is $30. Then you tack on three times that for sewer. That's outrageous. Um, next one is code enforcement. I'd like to get some of that free money because you're paying code enforcement to do zip. Right around District 3, you'll see cars parked on the lawn. You'll see fences half torn down that nobody does anything about. You see garbage cans out three days after garbage day. We're told in the bylaws that we have from 5 p.m. the day before to 5 p.m. The, the garbage day, that the cans have to be put up. And I've seen cans left out three solid weeks. Not days, weeks. I've seen code enforcement drive by, not stop and do anything. I've seen code enforcement blow three stop signs. You know, they might slow down to 15 miles an hour, but they're still moving. Um, code enforcement's not doing a damn thing in our, in our eyes. They might be doing something, but not from what we've seen. Um, we've called code enforcement on people that walk their dogs and their dogs crap in our yards. Code enforcement doesn't do anything. We went to a magistrate um, meeting back in March, I think it was, March or April. We were told we were going to be able to say something. He didn't want to hear it. In fact, they ran us out. Well, we got it left, but they wouldn't let us speak. So that needs to change. He, he starts his meeting saying they're not interested in the money. They don't want to take people's money. Well, that's fine. But when you start off with that, people go, well, okay, I'll do what I want then. Doesn't matter. Um, one of the cases that I sat there and listened to, there was the Chevron on Deltona Boulevard had been run down, closed, graffiti all over the place, and they gave them six months to fix it. They didn't get it fixed. So they gave them another six months. No fine, no nothing. If you don't have it done in six months, they'll, you'll pay a fine. Well, I don't know. I never followed up on it, so I don't know if they are paying, paying that fine. It still looks like crap. Spurt, that was burned down. Right? Not the burned one down. Oh, burned, the one across the street. The one right next to the Little Sammy's. Okay. Okay. Yeah, not the one at the corner of Enterprise and Deltona. Um, another business, I think it was a Dollar General or something. You know, had multiple violations. And they had six months to get everything done. No, nope, didn't do it. Didn't even pick up the trash outside the dumpster in six months. And they said, oh, well, we'll give you another three months to get that done. That's bullshit. Um, and my last thing is the city commission and you and the city manager 
need to make a decision. Quit, like some people have said, quit dragging things out for six months, a year, two years. Make a decision. Right or wrong, make the decision. Sometimes you can come back and fix it and make it a better decision. But make a decision. Case in point, the interim city manager. We've been working with this for a year and a half, two years now. Because James Shank's gone. Um, that's a little bit long to be waiting to find a new city manager. We've gone through several. Hmm? We've gone through several interims. Exactly. That's my point. Is we shouldn't have to. And stop with the golden parachutes. The city cannot afford them. It is, we're already too far in debt because of that city center. That alone put us way too far in debt that we don't use. Um, I could go on about that. And my if my neighbor John was here, he could talk your ear off for three hours about what he sees wrong. But like I said, the city needs to just start making decisions. Quit saying, we'll see, we'll study it, we'll do this, we'll do that. Make a decision on it. Do we have any questions on social media? No. All right, <clears throat> folks, I, I really appreciate every single one of you coming here. Uh, did you have, I think you have one more question. I do. Uh, when the lady over there was talking about you know code enforcement and the shabby homes, um, I have a rental next to me, and it's owned by a slum landlord from Orlando. So we have a few cases of, like that. I went to code compliance in person today because I'm tired of calling them, and they just have somebody mow the yard kind of thing. So he said there's something before the the city. They're thinking of putting a regulatory, some kind of regulation in place to. Uh, to make these landlords maintain their um, Some properties? Came before the city and they were shut down. They were shut down. It was shut down. It was, um, I don't know if something else similar is coming up, but I, I will add that question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Folks, yes. thank you all for coming out. Uh, give everyone an opportunity. Uh, this time, Mr. Burbank, would you like something? Uh, ladies first. Uh, Commissioner? No, I'm sorry. Unless anybody has any um, questions for me, I took notes. Um, I, I mean, there are a lot of things that have answers to them that have been discussed, but you know, we, we can follow up with them. We can both meet with the uh, city, manager. city manager, and we can go over my list so I can bring you up to date with a lot of the stuff that was discussed here has been discussed, there is a solution for it or is in work at, especially the uh, Lakeshore project. And I just want to give you an FYI, the Lakeshore project is also a St. John's management project. It's not just the city of Daltona that has to be done. So it's not something the city said, you know, we want to do this. It has to be done, you know, according to the uh, St. John's management, but it's, uh, it's being worked on keep in, in touch with the residents of Lakeside and uh, Edgewood Couple and it's been Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Burbank. Uh, Sammy, uh, Mr. Mayor, the people, the only question I can answer with any certainty, those people just wandered out and that's why we can't just pump water directly to sure. the intercoastal waterway. A, it's too far away. <laughs> okay. B, you have to cross through, I don't, couldn't tell you how many individual privately owned parcels to get there. And you go so far, you can run into the city of Edgewater, and I'm sure they're going to have something to say about that. <laughs> that was pretty much it. Thank you, Mr. Ray. Well, folks, thank you all for coming out. Um, I appreciate it. Um, I'll try to give you uh, business cards if I can pull them up. Before you leave, that way you can send me emails, and uh, I look forward to hearing from you in the future. And just keep in contact, because I'll be having more of these moving forward. So thank you all for coming out.